My mother-in-law recently adopted a cat, and since cats consider themselves to be royalty, this cat is getting a soft and comfy bed on a branch to lounge around in. I was given an idea of what the cat tree should look like, and I used that image to come up with my own design. So first I need to locate a log or a branch or something to build with. Now, where would I find something like that? After carefully scrutinizing thousands of branches, I settled on this one. I like the curve in it, and the branch off the top looks like it'll be good for supporting a cat bed. If this branch is going to live indoors, it'll have to be cleaned up a bit. Imagine a cat scratching on this thing in the house, and there'd be bark everywhere. Not to mention, I'm sure there are probably a few bugs living on or in this branch. It's also going to have to be trimmed down a little bit, since this part is way too long, and I think it's a bit too tall for a cat to hop up on. First, I use the Japanese pull saw outside of the barn to trim off a bit of the extra length to make it more manageable so I can take it into the shop. Then I use the bandsaw to trim the bottom. I thought the bandsaw would help me get a nice square cut since this will be the part that sits on the base and it should be relatively level. And then I trim the top branch down to size as well. I had already measured a cat to see how long the bed should be. Lucky for me, I was able to find a cat laying around doing nothing. My branch still has a lot of bark on it though, so I'm taking it back outside to get rid of that bark. After the first little bit was off, you can see there have been a number of bugs living in this branch. The easiest way I found to remove the bark was to use a hatchet. This took the bark off pretty easy, and I imagine that all those bugs eating their way under the bark only made it easier to remove. The patterns made by the bugs will give the branch a really cool look once I get it all cleaned up. There were still a few little bits and pieces to cut off, and the pull saw worked well for that. Now I can start sanding. I did this part outside as well. Why not try to reduce the dust in the shop, since I still don't really have any air filtration in there. But that's changing soon. I'll have a video on that in the next couple of weeks. The sanding worked really well. The branch is nice and clean, and you can really see all the little patterns made by the bugs. Now I want to seal the branch to keep any other bugs out, so I'm going to put on a few coats of this varathane. I like the look of this branch now, so while it dries, the next step is to create a base to attach the branch to. I'm going to make this part out of some scrap plywood left over from the cabinets. First I'll use the crosscut sled to cut my base to length. I don't need to cut it to width because the scrap is already the right size for that. I also plan to use this cutoff for a smaller platform that I'll attach to the branch, just as a little step to help get up to the top. To attach the post to the base, I'm going to use a lag bolt. These are left over from the bench build. I hope to make this entire thing out of scraps or things that I find lying around. The head on these bolts is a bit small, and since I want to be able to crank this down nice and tight, I'm going to add a washer so it won't pull through the board. And this will all be on the underside of the base, so I need to countersink it all. To do that, I grab the Forzner bit, and clear some space for the washer. Then take another drill bit, and pre-drill the hole for the bolt. Now with that same drill bit, I can pre-drill the hole in the bottom of the branch, so the lag bolt won't split the wood when it's drilled in there later. Now the branch is dry and the base is ready, so I can attach these two and see how it looks. Not too bad so far. It seems to be pretty strong and should be able to hold the weight of a cat. But the base is a little boring, so I'm going to add a little paint. Of course, this is paint I already have lying around, so the total cost of this project so far is zero dollars. The paint, however, does not have great coverage. It took three coats to look decent. Then, once I finally had it all painted and dried, I thought the edges looked a little too plain. So I decided to break out the router and make the edges of the base fancy enough for feline royalty. I think I moved a bit too slow at first and got some burning in there. But that's okay, it's all going to be painted anyway. And this router is one of the reasons that I need some air filtration in the shop. The base is pretty much done, so now I can work on the bed part. I'm going to attach one side of the bed to this top post, and to help it fit snug, I'm going to take it over to the new spindle sander. 
Many of you may be familiar with this machine. It seems to be a popular choice of many woodworkers. I think it's because of the versatility of it. Combining a belt sander with a spindle sander seems like a pretty good idea. I only use this machine for a bit and see what I think of it. Then I'll do a review video and let y'all know what I think of it. And maybe if you're already thinking about buying one, the video might help you decide one way or the other. So far, my first impressions are good. One of the spindles was just about the right size for this post. and the bed platform fits pretty well up against it. For the other side, I changed the sander from the spindle to the belt and sanded a flat spot for the bed platform to rest on. And here's me trying to remember to clean as I go. The sander has dust collection, but it doesn't seem to keep up with this much material being removed at once. The bed platform can be attached to the post now, but before I do that, I'm going to add some small sidewalls, just enough to stop the pillow from sliding off. And I found just the thing to make the sidewalls from. I have some oak scraps left over from the puzzle easel, and since that puzzle easel is already in my mother-in-law's house, then having matching wood on the cat tree is a good fit. These boards, however, are too thick, so I'm going to resaw them on the bandsaw. I'm going to cut them roughly in half and then plane them down till they're all the same size. Now I can start cutting these to length, and my go-to for most crosscuts is the crosscut sled. This is easily one of the most used items in the shop now. I'm glad I took the time to make one. Now for everyone's favorite part, sanding. All these pieces will need a little extra sanding too, to remove the burn marks. When I originally cut these pieces for the puzzle easel, I had trouble feeding a large board into the table saw and staying at a consistent feed rate, and it really burnt the boards. Time to attach these to the bed platform. I'm going to use glue and brad nails for this part. The brad nails end up leaving small holes, so I'll use some wood filler to plug them up. I don't have an exact color match for this wood, but after they're sanded and stained, I think it'll be hard to tell they're even there. And as long as no one points it out to the cat, I'm sure she'll never notice. But she will notice if there's no cushion on top of her throne. So that's the next step. We have some old foam from an Ikea chair that has been replaced, and it's just about the right size for the job. I just have to trim a bit off the sides and it'll be ready for fabric. The fabric was also reclaimed from another use. My mother-in-law made my wife an apron for her pottery studio, and this is what's left over from that. And now we're getting into unfamiliar territory, a machine that I don't have a lot of experience with, the sewing machine. For those of you out there who know a lot about sewing, try not to make too much fun of my sewing skills. And who knew a sewing machine could sound like industrial mining equipment? After watching a couple of YouTube videos on how to thread a bobbin, I eventually made a cap pillow. Now I can sand the wood filler from those brad nail holes and add some stain. This is a two-in-one stain in polyurethane. It's the same stuff I used on the puzzle easel. I can set that aside to dry for now and work on the little step that will attach lower down the tree. I'm using that cutoff from the base, and in order to fit up against the round post, I'm going to use the spindle sander again, with the largest spindle. I had some troubles with this one, the sandpaper didn't want to stay on the spindle, but I figured out that a washer was missing, and once I added that back in, it worked just fine. Again, even with the shop vac connected to the sander, there's a lot of sawdust piled up on the table. But I'll admit this is a pretty aggressive bit of sanding. Maybe other similar sanders would not be able to keep up with that much dust either. If any of you happen to have another type of spindle sander, please let me know how well it handles big jobs like this one. The bottom step is going to be held on with another one of these lag bolts, but no washer this time. So I used a smaller Forzner bit for a countersink for the head of the bolt, and then pre-drilled the rest of the hole, just like on the base. That seems to work fairly well, but this piece is going to be covered with fabric as well, the same stuff that I made the pillow from. Once I had the fabric attached, I cut a spot for the bolt to go through, and now I'm ready to put it back on the post. With that done, the tree is ready for the bed. I pre-drilled a hole in the top post to attach the bed, and added another screw on the other side of the bed. For the finishing touch, I added a little bit of rope to the post, and left a little bit of string for the cat to play with. This is one lucky cat. 
first she gets rescued by my mother-in-law, and now she gets this elevated platform where she can sit up high and look down on all her subjects. Also, if you're wondering why there is no footage of the cat happily sitting up on her platform, she is a rescue cat and is still a little shy around new people, so we'll just have to imagine a cat sitting up there judging people. And click here to see how I made the puzzle easel. 